music, ooh, excuse me, uh, in general is everywhere. You see it in grocery stores, at the gas station, um, almost everywhere, really. But there's a couple places that you don't see it, such as hospitals and um, elderly, elderly care, care homes. homes. So, so, yeah, a, a lot of the time it is used for everything from sorrow and uh, on through even um, eventful times, such as a dance, or obviously that's what you, you dance to is music. Um, what if I told you music could be used as medicine, not just for entertainment? So this is my great-grandma. She passed away about a month ago. Um, one of her biggest complaints was always that she hated the elderly care in her home. The food wasn't good. She was on 100% oxygen 24-7. Um, and it was very sterile, a very sterile environment with not a lot of interaction with others. So, uh, I was recently scrolling through Netflix, as a lot of us do, I'm sure, and uh, came across this documentary called Alive Inside. Now, what that is, is there's a man in New York, and he said, what if I could get an iPod that cost on average about $80, load some music on there, and give it to the elderly? So, that's what he did. He went to some elderly care homes in New York, uh, specifically for elderly with Alzheimer's, and um, this is the product. Uh, I'll show you a video just uh, in a second, but I want to give you a little backstory to it. There's this man named Henry, and Henry was not really happy. He was very dormant and never talked to anybody, not even his care patients, and was very immobile and just not very interactive. So you'll see what the music does to him in this little uh, teaser for Alive Inside. Uh, so I'm going to show you that real quick. Here it is. He was very isolated. When someone comes into a nursing home, they start to feel very disconnected from their lives, from who they've always been. If you can imagine somebody who hasn't recognized their loved one in five or six years. You know, I've been strong for four years. I just can't take it anymore. So it seems, so it seems tonight, we've got Music can do things which language can't. When I learned that maybe what a 90% of uh, a resident's time is spent idle, um, so let's try this and see what difference the iPods would make. I have one resident that barely opened her eyes, she didn't respond. Nothing worked. It was amazing once we put the iPod on her. She started shaking her feet. Getting no R. <laughs> I'm seeing her all over again. I'm going to take the music for one second, okay? Just mm -hmm. to ask you a few questions. Okay? Thank you. Yes or no questions. What, what does music do, do to you? Give me the feeling of love. No, no mass. Figure right now the world needs to come into music singing. You got beautiful music in. Beautiful. Oh, lovely. And uh, I feel the band of love, dream. And music therapy with Alzheimer's patients, something very powerful and primal is at work. This hard part keeps me happy. It keeps me from crying. And when I'm upset, all I have to do is take out my music and it soothes my nerves and I go fast asleep. And with an average cost of about $80, um, this is less than most people's daily medication costs. In terms of what difference it makes for the quality of life for an individual who's able to receive this uh, is just immeasurable. So uh, for me, uh, I can't think of any greater value.
So you see what that organization is doing there, giving iPods to the elderly with their favorite songs to cheer them up in everyday life. Now, when you think about it, $80 for a simple iPod that will last them many, many years and then can be used for the next elderly person versus $80 plus dollars a day for their daily medication, which adds up to almost over $30,000 a year it makes sense that we'd be using music as medicine. So, what if I told you not only does music help the elderly, but also people of my age? Now, many times, a lot of you students in the crowd are stressed with three plus hours of homework, two plus hours of uh, football practice, or whatever sport you do, and then you have to go to the library, and you have to work with the two least favorite people in your class on the group project that's due the next day, and then go home, socialize with your family, do a little more homework, and don't forget to eat, right? So, there's this little study by a University of California State professor, her name is Eileen Fair. So here's the statistics. So, Eileen did this study over four years. Now, she told her students, hey, I want you guys to come in next class with your favorite song, and we'll present them. And that's in her alternative nutri uh, ugh, nutrition class. So um, they went ahead and did that. They had them take a nine-question uh, survey with a um, range from 1 to 10, uh, how stressful they were feeling before and after. So you see some of the data points here. Uh, alternative nutrition doesn't sound like that stressful of a class. So many times their stress levels were uh, about five before listening to the music. And then after you see it's down to just under four. So um, when you see the effects of what music can do, and that's just a simple song, it's quite incredible what just that three or four minute song can do. The study also proves that by listening to six-ish minutes of music can release major uh, stress levels in 10 plus even better. So my question, why aren't we having seven minute dance parties in the middle of class, right? So um, now I wanna talk about this guy named Jack Antonoff. Now many of you maybe know him as lead guitarist for the band Fun or lead singer for the band Bleachers. Uh, but he's also a songwriter. Now, Jack um, went through two huge events in his life um, and uh, used music as something to uh, relax and get that stress out. Now, one of those events was 9-11. He grew up in New York at that time. And you can imagine the stress levels of everybody in New York when those towers fell. Now, so Jack uh, decided, I'm going to instead of taking my anger out on something stressful and painful, I'm gonna go ahead, link some words together, and create these beautiful verses and songs, such as Out of the Woods by Taylor Swift, and Carry On by Fun, and Bleacher's I Wanna Get Better. But not only did he uh, experience 9-11, his sister also passed away due to cancer. I personally find it amazing that such a person can make a difference in so many people's lives just by the events that they've gone through and uh, be able to link these simple, meaningless words together and create something so special for the world to hear. So I want to come into my conclusion. Music is medicine. I'm not saying completely throw out all science and every modern medicine thing we know today. Let's just take music and supplement it in there. And instead of letting people such as the elderly with Alzheimer's just get through the day, let's let them thrive. Let's use music as medicine. Thank you.